Right, I've got another really nice, low cost, easy to make, homemade tool set up to show you this evening. I've been brazing carbide tips onto um, mild steel shanks like this one here and grinding the angles up on my green grit wheel but I needed a method of actually lapping them with a diamond lap um, to finish them off and also to do the radius. First I bought a nice quality diamond lapping wheel on eBay and if you're going to do this setup you want to buy one like this um, and it has a fairly wide um, diamond lapping area on it it's about nine millimeter across so you want the widest one you can get they also come in different coarseness of grit I can't remember the number of this one and it's not written on there anywhere um, but it's very fine and it's three and a half inches in diameter so next I made this heavy duty lapping table up which can be used on both my mini lathe and my MyFred ML7 so it's universal fit and it can probably be adapted to fit on almost any lathe so basically it's made up out of two heavy steel plates. The large one is 150 millimeter square and 10 millimeter thick. And the smaller one on top here is 100 millimeter square and five millimeter thick. And you can get both of those steel plates at the moment on eBay for about £12 and that's including postage. So next I got a nice small strong steel hinge. I think it's off of a furniture piece. You can use a brass one as long as it's fairly strong. And um, I bolted that one to the 5mm plate there on the top there, nice and square and then I used a 5mm packing piece under the back of the hinge here and bolted that one on again with 6mm threaded allen bolts and it's got to be the same, that packing piece there has got to be the same thickness as the um, plate at the front here so that when the table comes down it lies level on the 10 millimeter plate and the position of the 5 millimeter plate on the 10 millimeter plate is 35 millimeter in from the side and it's flush with the end face and then I drilled the fixing holes for the MyFred ML7 and the fixing hole for the Chinese mini lathe and then looking from the front face in the center of the five millimeter plate about 30 millimeter in from the front face I drilled and tapped an eight millimeter threaded hole Next I made a nice size adjustment screw out of an 8mm stainless steel allen bolt knurled up a piece of brass that's a bit wider than the head of the allen bolt and then bored it out so it's a little bit deeper than the head of the allen bolt but left it very slightly undersized on the diameter and then I put both in the vise and used the force of the vise to push the allen bowl into the brass so it's a really nice tight fit and it cannot come out and that's the quickest way of making up a really nice adjustment screw so the adapter for the diamond lapping wheel is just made up out of a nice aluminium billet 
and it's turned dead true end to end and fits this bore here um, very nicely it just goes on there and then this face here is about a millimeter short from the inner face of the diamond lapping wheel and then I just got uh, another piece of aluminium drilled it out and that one goes down onto the face of the um, lapping wheel there's a six millimeter thread in there and when that one screws on it just clamps that inner flange to the adapter so it's quite important to get it running nice and true so I've made mine quite long and it's about 60 millimeter from this face here to the back face of the diamond lapping wheel and that's to give me a bit of length to keep the lapping wheel further out from the chuck and now I'll show you the setup on the lathes so this is the adapter and diamond lap in my MyFred ML7 and like I say you want to get this running as true as possible someone asked me how I get things running true in a hard jaw chuck like this one and if you're new to machining there's a method you can use and it's um you can either clock them in with a clock um, and gently tap it until you get it nice and true and move it around in the jaws to the best position but another method you can use is to start the lathe up and if it's running out slightly use a soft mallet and tap it like that until you see it run dead true now because I'm using the lathe for lapping um, I will be using a little bit of paraffin on the actual diamond lap and um, there's a danger that there's small particles coming off which could damage the ways so it's best to cover the ways up now whatever you do never get cloth or like a cotton cloth near the chuck or on the ways because there's a danger that it could get caught up um, you can use um, kitchen towel and then if it gets caught it'll just tear and I just stick that on the side there with a couple of magnets so then the table goes on like that and then check that it's nice and square to the front face of the diamond lapping wheel and tighten it up now because it's only lapping it doesn't really matter about the center height the tool can just go on there like that to do the angles on the sides um, but I'm going to lap the top face of the tool so I want that nice and square so I'm going to bring the height up a little bit and I've made this brass plate here and that just screws onto the top there with a 2BA screw And if you see that one is mounted on the five millimeter plate 
so that the centre line is just a little bit back from the edge. And you can tighten that up if you want to. Now sometime I'm going to make a little lapping vise or adapter to go on here. But at the moment I'm using the ordinary tool holder. But I'm putting the tool in upside down and locking it in there nice and square. Like that. And that gives me a nice flat surface on the back here to work on. And then start the lathe in the fastest speed, which is 800. That's a bit slow for lapping, but that's the fastest I've got on this ML7. And just put a little bit of paraffin on the wheel. And then you can lap away and get that top face dead square. And you can see there that I'm getting a lovely flat square surface. So that's the top of the tool done. Then I can take this adapter plate off or just swing it out of the way if I wanted to but I'll take it off to get it right out of the way. And I'm going to turn the tool back over like that. and set the angle on here on the adjustment knob on the bottom and lap that side You can see a nice flat side. Then I can wind the table across. So it's further to the other side leaving the same angle on the table and that's the other angle button Next I can tilt the table right up with the adjustment on the underside and do the radius.
and that's the radius done on the end and at a nice angle. So that's the tool finished lapped and ready for machining. So that's what it looks like from this angle with my adjustment um, on the table for the radius. And the adjustment on the side, move the table over. For the angle. So it's a really nice strong versatile table and I'm very pleased with that. You can actually use it for shaping pieces of metal as well by using one of these with a disc sanding disc on it. I do have a disc sander but it's nice to have something like this as well if you're doing something very intricate. So I'll lower the table, check it's clean underneath so it lies dead flat. Incidentally, when you're using the table, always lock the saddle. And I have it about a millimeter to two millimeter from the end face of the disc. Then you can just use it like an ordinary disc sander. for putting radiuses on and shaping pieces of metal or even wood or plastic. So on the Chinese mini lathe the table is mounted on the top of the compound. Take the tool post off and then the table goes on the tool post bolt a spacer on the top of that one and then put the tool post nut on the top and bring it up and check that the table is dead square to the diamond lap and then lock that one up and if you have a saddle lock just lock that one up I've taken my um, tailstock off the machine and again it's about a millimetre gap between the lapping face and the end of the table. Then wind the table back and put the revs up as fast as they go. Bit of paraffin. Just check that a minute. About there.
and then you would wind the table over and do the other angle. And you can do it like that, or you can take the tool out of the tool holder and just use it straight on the table. Like that and then I can tip the angle right up and do the radius So I'm really pleased at how that works on both lathes. And again to face the or to lap the top of the tool I've put it upside down in the tool holder like that. So this face here is going to go on there like that. And I can lap it like that on there. I don't need the um, brass adapter on this one because it's um, much nearer centre height on this one. So as you can see on this one um, I put it upside down in the tool holder but it's um, up the other way compared with the Myford ML7 and that's because the centre height is different on this lathe. It doesn't really matter where you lap on the wheel but when you're doing the top face of the tool um, it's best to be near centre height as you can and then you'll get an even lap of the wheel. So I hope you enjoyed the video and seen how versatile this tool set is and how easy it is to make it. And now I can use it to lap all my tools, um, get the right angles and make lovely tools like this and also choose whatever radius size I want on the end. And if you make one, you can buy second-hand carbide tools 
knowing that you can give them a quick lap up and they'll be ready for further use. And just before I go, I'd just like to mention, if you're new to tool grinding, if you're going to rough grind carbide, you need to get a green grit wheel which is specifically designed to grind carbide.